getting pretty hot and sweaty here in New York City, so I don't want anything too heavy. So today we're gonna make three light and fresh pastas that are perfect for summertime. They take about 20 minutes or less to make, so they're easy and quick. This first one is a tahini and greens pasta salad. It's kind of like a classic pasta salad, but better for you and packed with flavor. The first thing to do for this recipe is to chop our green beans and asparagus. And what I love about this recipe is that we're going to cook these vegetables with the pasta, so it's very fuss free. If your green beans have any stems, go ahead and remove those and then just chop the green beans into small pieces. One and a half to two inch pieces is good. For the asparagus, you want to snap it at its natural snapping point. I kind of snap it a little bit below just because I don't want to waste too much, but these bottom parts are pretty tough, so I don't recommend eating them. I'm also chopping the asparagus into small pieces. I've got four ounces of asparagus and four ounces of green beans. Looks like the pasta water is at a boil, so I'm gonna add the pasta now. This is orichette pasta, these cute little ears, but any shorter medium-sized pasta like penne would work. And since we're cooking pasta and vegetables together in the same pot, it's important to salt the water a bit more generously than if you were just cooking pasta alone. And once your water is boiling, go ahead and add the pasta. In the meantime, while the pasta is boiling, I'm going to make our lemon tahini sauce. This is very similar to my um, tahini salad dressings, but we're gonna add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil so that the pasta doesn't get dry. Give the tahini a stir so there are no chunks in there. You want it to be pretty smooth. To give some fresh summer flavors, we're gonna zest one small lemon into the tahini. We're also gonna add the juice of this lemon, probably about two and a half to three tablespoons worth. Uh, I think my strainer is in the dishwasher, so I'm just gonna catch the seeds with my hands. That is my lazy girl cooking technique. I'm also gonna add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. Again, this is gonna help the pasta not stick too much. We're gonna season with some kosher salt or sea salt, and, oops, and black pepper. I'm also gonna add just a little bit of water to thin it out as well. It'll be too thick right now without it. All right, it's looking really thick and fluffy and creamy. I'm gonna give it a taste. I think it's really important to always taste as you go because if you don't taste it until the end, you don't know if it's gonna be good. So always taste as you go. Mm, mm. That's lemony. The pasta has about five minutes remaining before it's done cooking, so now I'm gonna add the green beans. Those will cook for about two minutes and then we'll add the asparagus for another three minutes until everything's done cooking. The green beans have a couple minutes in there, so I'm gonna take the time to quickly chop up some fresh herbs. You could do this after the pasta is cooked because it's a cold pasta, you don't have to rush, but I like to save a little time. I've got some basil here today that I'm cutting into thin slivers, as well as some parsley and dill. It's okay if you don't have all three of these different herbs, you could use just one of them. My personal preference for this would be the dill. It goes really well with tahini. Herbs are chopped, so it's time to add the asparagus to the pasta. It takes three minutes, and during those three minutes, I'm gonna prepare an ice bath for everything to cool in. To make an ice bath, fill up a large bowl of cold water with ice. Once the pasta is al dente and the vegetables are crisp tender, transfer them to the ice bath. I'm using a spider to immediately drain the pasta and vegetables into the ice bath, but if you don't have a tool like this, it's fine. You can just drain it in a colander and then add it to the ice bath immediately after. Now that the pasta has been drained, we're gonna just shake out some excess water so we get more flavor and it's not too watery. And now we're just gonna add the pasta back to this large bowl. Most of the salt that we used to cook the pasta in drained off, so I'm gonna add just a little bit of extra salt so that every bite has a little bit of flavor. Now it's time to add our tahini dressing. I'm gonna add all of it and stir to coat. Now we're gonna toss everything to combine. Can you hear that? Saucy. Got a few final ingredients. We've got chickpeas. This is about one 15 ounce can, and this is just gonna bulk up our pasta salad so we have some protein. Another ingredient that is optional if you don't have it, but I personally love it. I toasted some pine nuts earlier, and that's gonna add a nice buttery crunch. Pine nuts are quite expensive, so if you don't wanna use those, you could use toasted almonds or pumpkin seeds. They'll both be good options here. And finally, our fresh herbs. Make sure we get one bite of everything. That is really good. It's got everything you want in a pasta salad. The tahini provides this really nice creaminess, but it's good for you. The green beans and asparagus are nice and crisp. The fresh herbs bring this complex depth of flavor. The buttery pine nuts add a nice crunch. It would be great to take to a picnic, especially with like a glass of a crisp white wine. Hold that thought, hold that thought. I think I need a little more. 
All right, we'll go for a second bite now that we have the wine. This is what summer's about, being quarantined in your home with a lot of food and a lot of wine. Oh, that is a great combination. Our next recipe is an Italian-inspired pasta. It's got two different types of tomatoes. I like to call it a due tomate pasta. We've got these tomatoes that, from the... Is that how you say tomato in Italian? I think so. Tomate? Tomate? Oh, no. That might be Spanish. Oh. Alexa, how do you say tomato in Italian? Tomato in Italian is... Pomodoro. Oh. Pomodoro. I got it wrong. It's... Not tomate, it's pomodoro. So we're gonna make a due pomodoro pasta. Pomodoro. Due pomodoro pasta. It's extremely easy. It's six ingredients and it's very quick, but still very flavorful. So the first thing you wanna do is bring some water to a boil for your pasta. I'm using capellini. It's a very thin, uh, almost like spaghetti, but thinner. You could use spaghetti or angel hair pasta. And while the water is heating up, I'm gonna make our fresh tomato sauce. You wanna use the best quality tomatoes you can get because it's just four ingredients. It's not getting cooked, so the fresher the tomato, the better quality the tomato, the better the pasta will be. And we just need to cut them into rough chunks. It's gonna go into the food processor, so you don't need to be precise. Look how pretty this tomato is. Now that's a good tomate, I mean. Pomodoro. I got these from the farmer's market this morning, so they should be really, really perfect right now. I like to use a serrated knife for tomatoes. Makes it a lot easier to cut through the flesh than using a chef's knife or any other kind of knife. For the pasta sauce, I'm also gonna use some fresh raw garlic. I've got two cloves here and they're kind of on the larger side. I'm gonna chop it up into rough chunks so that it has a little bit of an easier time in the food processor. Tomatoes, add the garlic. We're gonna add some sea salt, I'm using Good quality sea salt, since this is just a raw sauce. So again, you wanna use the best quality ingredients you have. And finally, some extra virgin olive oil. Just a couple of tablespoons. All right, now we're just gonna blend it. We want it to be mostly pureed with just a few little chunks in there. All right, it just needs a little more blending. Why is this so difficult? Just need, nope. We just need to, what is going on? Why is this board moving so much? What? Uh, we just need to uh, figure out how to close the food processor. There we go. The sauce is now done, mostly pureed, but a little chunky in there. And the sauce is very versatile, so you can make an extra batch, store it in the fridge for several days, and then you can spread it over grilled bread or toasted bread for a pan con tomate or pan con pomodoro. No, but then that's... Spanish and Italian. I don't know the Italian word for, for bread. Ciabatta, you can have a ciabatta e pomodoro. I'm just butchering both languages now. Do whatever you want. It's delicious with this pasta, but also on bread. The second type of tomato in this recipe are cherry tomatoes. We're going to skillet char them or skillet roast them, whatever you want to call it. While the skillet's heating up, we're gonna slice up some basil. Oh God, this is heavy. Oh. Uh, we're gonna slice up some basil and we need about half cup of basil leaves that will cut into fine strips. Line these leaves up so I can roll them up together and chiffonade them. Our cast iron skillet seems like it's hot enough so we're gonna head on over to the stove to char our cherry tomatoes. It's on medium high heat. It took about four to five minutes to start smoking. Then I added a little bit of regular olive oil followed by a pint of cherry tomatoes. The tomatoes need four to five minutes to get blistered and a little wrinkly and soft. And the pasta I'm using today takes just three to five minutes to cook. So in the meantime, I'll go ahead and cook the pasta as well. To our salted boiling water, I'm gonna add this capellini. I've got about eight ounces here. Our skillet charred cherry tomatoes are done. I'm gonna add them to this serving bowl. That sizzle is very satisfying. Now I'm adding the basil directly to the hot tomatoes. I like to add the basil to the tomatoes when it's still warm so that they can kind of marry together. I don't know if that's the right word. They can marinate together? No, they can get married together. They can marry. The flavors can marry together. I think that's what I'm trying to say. I'm gonna go get the pasta and then it will be time to eat. Needs a little more sauce. 
We're also gonna finish it with some extra fresh basil, a little sea salt, black pepper, all super simple ingredients, but they work really well together to make this very flavorful. Bellissimo. Our final dish is an Asian-inspired noodle salad. I know it's not technically pasta, but we're gonna get a little broad with our definition of pasta today. I'm going to use some udon noodles, but you could also use soba noodles or brown rice noodles. I'm heating up some water on the stove, and in the meantime, I'm gonna chop our veggies. Since I wanna keep these recipes light and refreshing, we're gonna use raw vegetables, and I've picked things that are very crunchy. So the first item I have are snow peas. Also have some shredded red cabbage. I've got a cucumber and a yellow bell pepper. So we're gonna cut off the ends of the snow peas and then cut them into probably four pieces. I've also got a yellow bell pepper here that again, I've already used for something else. Of course, you don't need to use a yellow one. You could use a red or an orange one. I hate green bell peppers, especially raw, so I would not use a green bell pepper. They're not sweet. If you like them, you could obviously use them, but I probably don't trust you if you like raw green bell peppers, to be honest. No offense. And we've got our cuke. I'm pretty, pretty surprised I got that one. And we're gonna also cut that into some thin strips. And you don't have to be limited to the vegetables I'm using today. You could use other crunchy vegetables, depending on what you have. You could use carrots. You could use, what are some other crunchy vegetables? Oh, sugar snap peas, right. We have snow peas, but you could also use sugar snap peas, maybe radishes, even like raw, thinly sliced beets. You know, you can feel free to get creative. All right, the veggies are chopped, so now we're gonna make our sauce. It's uh, an almond butter base, and then we've got some other Asian-inspired ingredients. It's really, really good. We'll toss it with the cold noodles, and then we'll add the veggies. Same technique I used earlier. I don't wanna get a measuring cup stuck with all this almond butter in it, so I'm gonna weigh it out on my measuring scale. We need four tablespoons. I can't let this go to waste. To the sauce, we're gonna add a tablespoon of rice vinegar. If you don't have rice vinegar, lime juice would also work. Also gonna add a tablespoon of toasted sesame oil. It has this really bold, nutty flavor that is really hard to replicate. If you don't have it, it's fine. It's fine, I promise, but I really love it. So if you have it or you can get it, I highly recommend it. We're also gonna add some sriracha to make this spicy. Mine is almost done, so it's farting out. Now we're gonna add some soy sauce. This is technically tamari, so it's gluten-free. And a little bit of agave nectar to balance the spiciness. You could also use regular sugar or maple syrup. We're gonna whisk this all together. And to the sauce, to add a little more flavor, we're gonna add some freshly grated ginger. I've uh, minced this up with a microplane. Just gonna add a little bit more. And a few cloves of garlic that we're gonna crush using a garlic press. And this is too thick for a pasta sauce, so we're gonna add a little water to thin it out. All right, now I'm gonna add some udon noodles to boiling water. They only take four minutes. While the noodles are cooking, we're gonna prepare our garnishes and toppings. So I've got some fresh cilantro, and we're gonna slice up some scallions on an angle. And I forgot to mention earlier that we're gonna be also adding some edamame. That will be our protein source. This is frozen shelled edamame that I've defrosted in the fridge. And the noodles should be done cooking by now, so we'll go ahead and drain them and then rinse them under cold water until they're nice and cool. We're gonna add them to a serving bowl. Now we're gonna add our spicy almond butter sauce to the noodles and just toss those noodles in the sauce. The noodles are still a little bit wet from being rinsed, so the water is also helping the sauce come together. And now all we need to do is add the rest of the ingredients. So we've got the edamame here. We're gonna add our fresh, crunchy vegetables. I said two cups, but again, I'm eyeballing things, so I'm not 100% sure how much I'm using here. And then we're gonna add some scallions and cilantro on top, and then toss everything to combine. As with all of these recipes, you can adjust the quantities to your dietary needs or to however many people you're feeding. Oh my God, it's so good. I don't think I'm gonna stop eating this. If you're hungry for more light and fresh yet super flavorful vegan recipes, hit that red subscribe button down below because I'll be sharing more seasonal recipes throughout the summer. I'm gonna finish this bowl of pasta, have another glass of wine, and I'll see you guys in the next one.